Hello my DIY friend, today a new video for DIY home studio playlist. Today I will show you how to save money by repairing or even improving your favorite bathroom. Me and you together will rebuild the old broken nickel cadmium battery into a stronger lithium ion battery pack. Which will make our drill faster and stronger because it will make the voltage a little bit higher. If you already have bought professional cordless tools a while ago, the most of the nickel cadmium batteries used to them have already reached the end of their service life. In this case, there are three options, buy a new Bosch D70-745 nickel cadmium battery and just leave it as it is. Buy a new replacement for the original Bosch D70-745 battery but already a lithium ion type or create your own lithium ion battery of your choice. I chose the last option, to upgrade the cordless drill battery from nickel cadmium to lithium ion. By creating the battery yourself, I will create it with 4 volt higher voltage than the original was, which will give my drill more speed and power. To this task, we will need some DIY tools, the most importantly, heart and strength. 4 pieces of lithium ion 18650 type battery cell. The 18650 element shown in the video I changed after I did some tests to more powerful Samsung INR 18650-30Q. But then even similar performance will do the job. You also need force battery management system or BMS, which will prevent battery from exploding in your own hands. We also need a suitable lithium ion battery charger and moisture slash dust safe socket so that we can charge the new battery. Today's patient is this outdated Bosch 12 volt and 2 amp hour cordless drill battery and serial number D7074.5. The first task is to unscrew all the screws so we could get inside of it. When all the screws are loose, open the housing but carefully look at where each part is as it will need to be resembled. When we have made the new lithium ion battery pack. We removed the old nickel cadmium battery pack, we won't need it anymore, so you can just recycle it or throw it away. This is the moment when you can still rethink and simply replace the old to new nickel cadmium elements without starting a lithium ion battery mod project. We only need to take the part of the contacts from the old battery that we will use it for the new battery. Therefore, we remove all the excess stuff to get to the contacts part, but do not damage the contact itself. Then we check if the contact fits and is not damaged. If everything is okay, we continue our work. Here you can nicely see which contact is a plus and which is a minus. We are not interested in, in other contacts in this project. Since the length of the original negative wire is long enough, it remains to find approximately the same length plus contact wire. We thin both ends of the wire and solder the contact to our new plus wire. Looking at the contacts, it can be seen the original black wire was a plus, so let's mark both wires using hot glue gun. So not to confuse the polarities and not to damage it. To avoid failing the thinning process, note where each battery has a minus contact. We put the contact inside and glue it with the hot glue gun. The contact must be glued securely so that it does not slip when the battery is connected to the drill. Here are the BMS contact to wire to our 18650 cell batteries. Here is a simplified diagram of how to connect them all. The batteries will be sealed in series to obtain a higher voltage, so it is advisable to take batteries with a higher capacity. At the moment we will do something dangerous. It is mandatory to wear glasses because lithium ion elements must not be soldered. Only perform these tasks if you are 18 years of age or your parents are present next to you. Our task is to solder the contact of the 1865 battery cells so that the wires can be soldered better. Solder must be applied to the contact edge of the battery for as short time as possible. Heat will damage the battery and excessive heat may cause the battery to explode. It will be right to use the spot welder. If someone wants to support us and send it to us, we will only be sincerely grateful. Then we thin a large cross-section wire with which we will connect the battery elements together to create a battery pack. We put all four batteries in the body to understand the best way to put them in there. And with the help of tape we secure them together, so that it is easier to solder afterwards. Measure the length of the wire we will need and pinch it off, then solder the connecting wire. Turn the batteries upside down and connect the necessary batteries on the other side. It's like somewhat like this, of course. Using spot welder it will be much easier and safer. We hope someone will help the deck screw channel grow and send one spot welder machine which we could review and we could use for our next projects. That would be appreciated. We attach the last fourth 
element of our battery pack. And we soldered the four battery to our pack. With the help of multimeter, we checked whenever the battery pack has contact. Brilliant! 16.6 volts. Four more volts than the original, which will give our drill extra power and speed. With the help of hot glue, we glue all the battery elements together to form one hole. Hot glue also has a good ability to accumulate some of the heat that can freeze during use. Now, for example, where you can put a BMS board in our battery so that it does not interfere with anything. It a bit resembles an explosive which it could not be advised to walk in public places. It might cause some misunderstandings. To connect the batteries to BMS, you will need several short wires. We soldered the first wire to BMS and other end to the battery. So we soldered all necessary wires to BMS and batteries. But double check whenever the wiring is correct. For each BMS it is slightly different. Then we soldered the outgoing wire, which will join the drill's contacts. Here is our battery pack with BMS control cables added. Really looks like something that could scare my grandmother. Then we find a place where we can install a charging socket for this battery. Drill a hole for the charging socket in the found place. Solder the socket new housing hole. You will need two wires to solder the charging socket. We will solder both wires. But remember that the center pin of the charger is a plus polarity. Now we can safely glue the battery pack to the housing with hot glue. To hold it in its place, you shouldn't spare on the glue. We soldered the charging socket wires to BMS, then the last wire soldering. We soldered the large wires from the battery contact to a BMS outgoing contacts. Once done it, it remains to reassemble the battery housing as it was originally. We screw back all four screws and check if everything is back in their place. The polarity matches and the voltage is also what we chose. Very nice. Here's the final look. The only difference is the moisture safe charging socket, other than that, is the same as the original was. The battery can be charged through a separate charger. When the battery is charged, the green light will turn on. At our disposal, we have a very old Bosch GSR Professional Series cordless drill, which is so good that you'll be happy with extra 4 volt higher voltage. Let's charge the new, more powerful battery and let us test it a bit. Wow, I didn't expect such a good result. I, as a user of this drill, I can't recognize this anymore. It is much more responsive and stronger than it used to be. We have significantly increased this drill by 4 volts, from 12 to 16. The main thing when remodeling is to take good batteries. That's the basis of everything. Thank you for watching. I will also include links to some products. If you have any suggestions or questions, feel free to meet us in the comment section. And of course, as always, don't forget to push the like button and subscribe so we could meet again in new good money-saving DIY video.